Hey everybody, it's Gomladex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. Today's video is going to be a draft that was recorded live on the Twitch channel in the link in the description below, so if you hear me talking to chat a bit, that's what's going on there. Without further ado, let's hop into this thing. Alright, and here we are now with my first premiere draft on my personal account of Alchemy Horizons Battle for Baldur's Gate, and we have Wilson the Bear Comrade as our rare. I don't think anybody can... Uh, Justify passing Wilson. Wilson is adorable. 2 mana 2 2 Reach Trample Ward 2 is already very good, and the specialized cards, as you can see, become pretty big beat sticks. A 5 5 Reach Trample, and you can uh, exile Wilson from your grave later to give something else a perpetual buff of plus and plus 1 Reach Trample Ward 2. Then the other versions also are just different, various versions of a big, powerful bear. So, Wilson Bear Comrade. Gonna be my pick one pack one here. Skullport Merchant though has played incredibly well, so I could see that being the the legitimate best card in the pack maybe, but Wilson is definitely very powerful. And then Null Hunting Party is another card that's been pretty disgusting. A gigantic first strike creature that puts another in your hand when it attacks. Ooh, we can continue taking green cards here with Jahira Harper Emissary. She's pretty solid. 2 mana, 2, 3 hexproof from artifacts and enchantments, already a fine deal. And then you can specialize her later to blow up an artifact or enchantment if you need to. There's also a black dragon, which is another great card. 7 mana for a 4, 4 flyer, and you give something minus 3, minus 3 when it hits the board. Those are probably my top two here. Sewer Plague's pretty good removal. Uh, Hill Giant Herdgorge is fine. Top end for a green deck. So I like Shahira and black dragon. Sewer Plague the most, though. I think I'm gonna go with Black Dragon. I think Jahira is like solid, but not like super explosive or super powerful or anything, and Black Dragon's definitely very explosive. Thanks, Arena. I'll just have to remember that this is a Black Dragon. We've got Snowborn Simulacra as the mythic rare here. Conjure a duplicate of each of X non-token permanents into your hand. Those cards gain, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast this spell. If X is five or more, you may put one of them from your hand onto the battlefield. So for 7 mana, get a duplicate of 5 non-token permanents into your hand. So 7 mana, draw 5, cast one of them for free. Put one on the battlefield for free. This seems huge. Seems like a huge pick 3 here. This is probably a sign that these people aren't drafting blue. We can go black, blue, or green, blue here. Well, a lot of... White cards in this pack. Inspiring Bard is not the greatest green card, and Charmed Sleep is one of the weakest removal spells in the whole format because of the amount of artifact enchantment hate and the amount of flicker effects that can kind of ruin its day. So I don't think I'm taking a green or a blue card here. It's probably going to be one of these white cards. Probably Lulu, because Lulu is absolutely adorable. Um, yeah, it seems like one of the strongest cards and also the cutest card. Now we see a lot of green stuff. So we can go, you line up the shot. Main deckable. Um, artifact and enchantment removal as well as flying creature removal. It's crushing canopy, but you can cycle it for one mana, which is very good. And there's Dread Lenorm, which is nice if you're playing a slow game with your green deck. Playing the long game, it's a great card to ramp into with your cards like Scaled Nurturer. Scaled Nurture is a solid way to ramp up into stuff. If we want to definitely go green-black, we could take Kaga, but I kind of want to try to go green-blue with this Snowborn Simulacra. So kind of like Nurture, because it helps ramp up into the big X mana we need for that card. And it's also good in a slow game. Oh, there we go. Corlesa Scale Singer. So we can play green-blue dragons, where with Corlesa we get to play any dragons from the top of our library and look at the top card of our library at any time. Corlesa seems like one of the strongest cards in this pack, followed by, like, the Linorm has played pretty well. Yeah. I'm down for Corlesa. A big old Hill Giant or Pseudo Dragon Familiar, actually. So will fill out the curve in the middle pretty well, as well as being a dragon for Corlesa to potentially draw. I'll take the Pseudo Dragon Familiar here, actually. Um, so this Lulu is a white card. This You Meet in a Tavern is actually a black dragon, so that's a black card. We'll keep them in mind. But, uh... This is probably where we're headed. It's a green-blue dragon's deck. I think the cats are... 
messing with something under my bed, some old Amazon box or something, which is great. He loved to see it. He loved to hear it specifically. I can't see anything. Uh, so we have a soul knife spy, which is fine if you can find ways to get it. What are they doing? To damage somebody. And then follow the tracks, which is fine to ramp up into our big X mana spell or any other big dragons if we end up wanting those. Uh, Soul Knight Spy is kind of cool with Pseudo Dragon Familiar. Give the Spy flying. I'll take the Spy here. Played a lot of the, the ramp spell already. Haven't played a lot of the Soul Knife Spies. These cats are about to get kicked out. They're being big buttholes. Well, this is a solid white card to see this late. We see the Noel Hunting Party this late? This thing was destructive. You can cast this for really cheap if you attack with a lot of creatures, and it's a massive first striker that puts another into your hand. I mean, I'm pretty committed at this point, but that thing's insane. I think I'm going to take it. Maybe we end up blue-red or something somehow. Probably taking the hill giant here. All of these white cards are fine, and we do have a Lulu. Yeah, I think I'll just take Herd Gorger. Wow, Giant Fire Beetle's still in here for red. Dust Guard for white. Take the Fire Beetles. Soldiers of the Watch, I guess. Nothing super exciting there. Yeah, it's not too hard for this to be like a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four first strike. That puts another 4-4 four, four first strike into your hand. Don't love either of these. We'll just scoop something up. Play around with something. Yeah, double team is just a pretty inherently powerful effect. We did not open up Jack. I'm not going to continue that phrase. We didn't open up anything for a green blue deck except pan together. So I guess that's the pick. We open up an excellent white card, Sea Tower Imprisonment. It's an arrest effect, a pacifism effect that spits out a 2-1 with double team when you play it. That's probably the best card in this pack. Followed by the Catibri. Got a Soldiers of the Watch and a Lulu. We don't have any good removal yet, though, on color, so I am going to take Band Together over that white removal spell. But I don't think it would be insane to take that removal spell. Uh, this pack is just a bunch of black cards. Sepulchre Ghoul, Black Dragon. Again, Charm Sleep is just not where you want to be with your removal. If you're really lacking on it, then I guess you can go that way. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess we're on Charmed Sleep or the Black Dragon and just keep drafting every color. Not really solidifying our ground or anything. Yeah, I'll take the freaking... the freaking Charmed Sleep. Another Catibri of Mithril Hall. Well, no Hunter's a solid 2-drop for any green deck. It's fine. 2-mana two 2-2 two, two, that maybe gets bigger later. Goggles of Night is fun. Doesn't seem super good, though. Solid amount of mana commitment there to just slap it on something. And you really need an evasive creature, otherwise your opponent's just going to snap trade into it. And then the four mana that you played to pay and then equip just went to nothing, because your creature just traded off anyway. Get another dragon for Corlesa. This deck looks weird. Our curve is two, three, and then six. <laughs> right now. I kind of want to splash red for Lozan, Dragon's Legacy. 
5 mana 4-2 flyer, whenever you cast an adventure or dragon, you deal damage equal to the spell's mana value to any target that isn't a commander. So your opponent's face or your opponent's creatures or anything like that. And we've been seeing some really solid red stuff get passed to us pretty late, like the Knoll Hunting Party and the Giant Fire Beetles. So if we can get a little red splash in here, that'd be good. Well, we could also take the Gigantic Snake Dragon, which I do like. But I'm going to take Lozan and get past another Lozan. Double Lozan. Yeah, we'll be Teamer Dragons. Green, blue, red dragons. Let's just go for it. I need some of those lanterns that tap for men of any color now. Or some of the fungus, the sapperling producer taps for man of any color. Oh, there it is, Lantern of Revealing. It's that or Giant Fire Beetles or Warriors of Tiamat, but I'm pretty sure the red is a splash here, so I shouldn't take a lot of cheap red cards. Just solid late game ones, so I'll take Lantern of Revealing. Help hit that red mana. We're going to be just like a late game, play a bunch of dragons like value deck. Just load our deck absolutely chock full of pseudo dragon familiars. <laughs> so if we ever get a Corlesa down, we just know we're drawing a ton of cards. Arcane Archery's been a really nasty combat trick, though. That's been pretty huge. So we could take that. But I'm just going to take the pseudo dragon familiar. Flexible little you come to a river or get splash in a Warriors of Tiamat just to up the dragon count. Doesn't seem like a great one though. I'll just take the You Come to a River. Ferret is Fireball. It's a double red. It's not super splashable, but it is removal. No, I think I'll just take Contact Other Plane. Don't love any of this. Just throw it goggles in the side. We could maybe try to play goggles in this deck. We've got a lot of flyers. Probably not. Oh wait, there's another Null Hunter. Take that. Alright, pack three. I don't know what we're looking for here, but this deck looks weird and not great, so... Just uh, fill it up with some kind of bomb stuff. Got three different colors we can open great cards in. And we opened up two really good black cards. Unfortunate. We'd go for a young blue dragon, scry one, draw a card, then play a 3-3 flyer later. It's a good creature type for us. Gives us a 5 drop, which we don't have any right now. I guess we have two lows in. I think I like the young blue dragon. What on earth is this? That is horrifying artwork. 3 mana. Enchanted creature control gets plus 3, plus 2 haste, and attacks each combat of able for 1 mana. Return it from your grave to the battlefield attached to a creature control. And this card perpetually gains Enchanted Creature gets minus one, minus one. So the first time you bring it back from Grave, it's going to turn into plus two, plus one haste, and that'll be plus one, plus oh haste. This actually seems kind of powerful in the right deck. Not this deck, though. There's the mana ramp I wanted this whole time, the Underseller Mykonid. That is perfect. Add a mana of any color, so it helps get our red mana. Gives us a Sapperling for chump blocking in the early game. Ramps us up into their stuff. Band together is good too, but Underseller Mykonid is perfect because we're splashing a third color in this deck and we have big stuff to ramp into. So I'm taking the Underseller Mykonid. Now, Lizard Folk Librarians because we don't have anything going on in turn four. Get some Librarians in here. For Prophetic Prism also mana fixes us. Two mana draw a card immediately replaces itself and then it just sits there ready to give us whatever color of mana we're missing. Navigation Orb is fun too. It's a very expensive version of Cultivate. Three to play and then two tap sack it to get those two lands. Rose, stop. Hey, stop. Just trying to bust into my closet. Yeah, I can see Prism or Librarians here. Ooh, Dragon's Fire. That is our splash color, but still. Oh, Shadow Heart. I wish I just drafted black. Black looks like it's just ended up really open here. We also just opened a bunch of sweet black cards in the end. Cat, you're about to get kicked out of here. I should 
probably take Scaled Nurture over Dragon's Fire. Oh yeah, the cats are vandalizing like nobody's business. Ooh, Draconic Mirrorlists, absolutely perfect. I'm gonna get this cat out of here. Okay, second Corlesa, perfect. Now the deck kind of might actually function. Because with double Corlesa, we can more consistently actually do the thing of having 10 dragons in our deck. And uh, draw cards off the Corlesas. Don't really like any of this stuff. Pretty much at all. I'm not going to splash a young red dragon. Maybe a wild shape? Maybe I just... Got 18 creatures already. Maybe I'll use that kind of weird combat trick. Another Draconic Muralist? Okay. And another Underseller Myconid? I have an Underseller Myconid and a Lantern of Revealing. And I have a lot of twos and threes, and Draconic Muralist just seems like such a powerful effect of 4 mana 4 3 that searches for any dragon from our deck when it dies. I'm going to take the Muralists over the Myconid, but that's a really hard choice. Kind of awkward, all the Myconids showed up in the last pack. Didn't see any of them in pack one or pack two. Uh, Clever Conjurer is probably getting cut. It's just like a way worse version of Underseller Myconid. Or even Lantern of Revealing is probably better. Don't have any... Well, we've got Scaled Nurturers and a deck with a ton of dragons. Lurking Groper actually is probably solid here. And then we take the Librarians... Take the Ambitious Dragonborn. Although I don't really like this effect. So this would be the first dragon I'd probably cut. The Cat Commentaries Primo Entertainment. They are absolute rascals. Rapscallions. Okay, let's cut nine cards, and we've got a Teamer Dragons deck. Should be super fun. Tons of creatures. Cut these non-dragons. Just kind of put all of our weakest non-dragons to the side. Still have 21 creatures here. I get rid of all of that, how many? 17? Okay. We are running kind of a weak dragon here. We have 13 dragons in the deck, but now we're running like Ambitious Dragonborn, which is often gonna be like a four mana two two, because we'll play this where our only other creatures are all these <laughs> pseudo dragon familiars. Yeah, I really don't like Ambitious Dragonborn. I'm actually gonna cut that for another non-dragon that I cut. Uh, maybe the Lizard Folk Librarians. Maybe Air Cult Elemental, Header Cap, I don't know, something random. I'll put the Librarians in. Big Blocker. I could also just go with 16 creatures, it's not a big deal. Um, so for non-creatures that we cut, we're cutting two. We are a very low on removal deck, so I guess we have to play Charmed Sleep. Because our other removal is banned together and then Lozans. Hopefully Double Corlesa is going to function as our card draw and we don't need Contact Other Plane. And then Wild Shape is also kind of a narrow combat trick. It's a weird one. It does potentially counter a targeted removal spell though, making something a Hexproof Turtle can do that but doesn't work super well in combat a 1-5 and a 3-3 three, three aren't super likely to win too many fights that other things wouldn't I think I like it like that and when we look at our um, we look at our mana we have Lantern of Revealing band together I'm sorry Lantern of Revealing Underseller Mike and Prophetic Prism 
to help cast Lozans. So that's three red sources right there, even without any mountains. Six red sources if you add Triple Mountain. I think I can cut one of these five red sources for the two red cards. Might be a little more than we need still. So we could actually go eight, eight, and one as the lands. Might be mildly greedy. Just one mountain and three mana rock kind of things for red sources. But I believe in the heart of the cards today. That's what we're going to name this deck. That's definitely how you spell cards. There we go. The Teamer Dragons deck is ready. We're going to do six stuff with it. The round one of the premiere draft is going to be against a drunken Superman with an unkeepable opener, but we get to mull into a solid keep thanks to underseller Mykonid. Red white from our opponent and steadfast paladin on turn two. Don't love that. I might even double block. Be a little bit of a bold double block with Herd Gorger and Simulacra in hand, though. Yeah, I guess I just take it. We do have some big stuff to use this mana on. They look at our creatures and lands, make them come to play tapped. So they know we don't have any lands in hand now. So if they have removal, they'll probably shoot our Mykonid. Ooh, scry one, draw one with young blue dragon. Is that better than playing the pseudo dragon right now? I think it is, because we really need to hit a land. This lets us dig two cards deep for it, and we immediately hit it. Perfect. Which means we get to also play the pseudo dragon. 1-1 one, one Sapperling is definitely very good against the Borskier Tollkeeper. 1-1 one, one Sapperling trade into the 3-1 body there. Keep that off of us. Snap trade for this Paladin because we have the late game on lock with this hand. And this deck in general. We have six mana now to play the Herd Gorger. It will come into play tapped, but once it untaps, that's going to be a huge deal. Could also just play the Blue Dragon. I'm actually going to play the blue dragon here and just make sure we still have blockers for everything they're doing right now. Because we're one man away from just kind of winning the game by going Snowborn Simulacra. If we do this for X equals 5, we're going to draw 5 cards, whatever the best 5 permanents on board are, and we're going to put one out for free. Oof, still one man away from it, unfortunately. And we're definitely going to make a Wrathful Red Dragon with these Simulacra. Because we have a lot of dragons in our deck. Yeah, Wrathful Red Dragon's very good. We're going to Charmed Sleep that card, but let's Prophetic Prism here first. We did not draw land for turn. We do have you come to a river. We could bounce the dragon, but I would rather keep it on the board locked down, so if I hit my land next turn, I can get a copy of it. They are a white deck here, so they can have ways to flicker the red dragon to get rid of the enchantment. Rasad is really good. Exile one of our creatures until Rasad leaves the board. They can also specialize Rasad to make it so the creature never comes back. If they specialize as the white version, it comes back as a 1-1 one -one with no abilities later. Alright, we're taking two. Still one mana away from the river thing. I play Librarians because I can play Librarians and still hold up you come to a river. 
to bounce at instant speed. Plus, Librarians lets us scry to this land we're looking for, get these two non-land cards away. And then we're going to go for no attacks and pass the turn. Warriors of Tiamat. Does have double team, doesn't it? Except I just put that back in their hand right now. I could also trade my sapperling up into it, I guess. This might be wrong. I'm like, it's gonna get an attack off later anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna trade this into killing that. Oh snap, that thing's a dragon? Yes it is. Which means they kill the mic and it God dang it. Didn't hit the land anyway, so. Wouldn't have simulacred this turn. Well, yeah, that is another pretty massive downside of Charmed Sleep. Is that Wrathful Red Dragon keeps its abilities, which means the second Warriors of Tiamat is gonna just take us to uh, just take us to Pound Town, just destroy us, take us out back with a crowbar in hand. I don't remember when that forest got scried to the bottom. Oh, that was from our mulligan, I think. Okay, we're back to being one man away from Simulacra. There's the warriors of Tiamat. They get to shoot something for two when we trade our librarians into them. So kill our sapperling. They have, another, they have a way to deal four damage. Yep. Well, that stack has, stacks up pretty well. But here we go, Snowborn Simulacra for seven, or for five, spending seven mana on it. One, two, three, four, five, please and thank you. And I'll cast a free Wrathful Red Dragon. Specialized Rasad into the red version, which creates three one ones when it dies. Okay. I kind of want to Rasad their Rasad because it's funny. And I won't create any one ones if we do that. Alright, Rasad, Rasad is funny, so we did it. We've got band together at the ready at instant speed, so I just kind of want to hold that up and start attacking in the sky. So we work to close this game out. Yeah, Snowborn Simulacra is another pretty wild, just super expensive sorcery, but if you make it up to that seven mana, then 
Huge draw spell. Cast something for free. This might be a Wrath or something from our opponent. Rally Maneuver it is. Which one gains First Strike, which gains Lifelink? Oh, these colors are so descriptive. Thank you, Arena. I don't know what, which is getting what. I guess we let it resolve and then we see. First Strike on the Paladin, Lifelink on the Toll Keeper. Um... Yeah, because we have a Wrathful Red Dragon out, this is actually still just fine. I'm still going to save Band together to be really safe. Because this is all fine, we still have the lead on board. Oh, Lozan. Oh, I don't know the mana to cast Lozan and hold up Band together. I feel like the a general way to kind of choose what you want to do is like the larger the lead you have is the less risky you want to be because it's like unless something goes really really wrong like we're definitely winning this game at this point so we're just going to play really safe and always have band together up so that the list of things that can go incredibly wrong is as small as possible if we're way behind then that's where we're like super free to just play massively risky plays because it's like, well, the odds of winning are so low anyway that the, our best chance of winning is if something risky pays off. But yeah, here I'm just going to hold up band together every turn for the rest of eternity. They're down to 14 now. Yeah, still don't have the mana for Lozan and holding up band together. So we'll play the Nurturer. Dragon's Fire, our dragon for five. Sure, and then we shoot their dragon for five if we want. But then it shoots our Rasad for five, so I'd rather shoot their face. Band together is only 4 damage. We're at 21. Let's actually go for Lozan this time. Because now we know band together isn't going to save our Wrathful Dragon or anything. It might save a Rasad from a fight spell or something, but... Our lead got much smaller once our Wrathful Red Dragon left the board, so... Now I'm cool with just tapping out for Lozan. And our opponent will scoop them up. And thank you very much for the follow, Banana Chicken. I think we are 1 and 0. Oh. Yeah, that was our first game of our Teamer Dragons drafts. We got to do some Dragon Tribal stuff, but that was because we used our opponent's dragon against them. I don't know if that counts. on the play with a turn to Corlesa. That's what the deck is all about. Lantern of Revealing is the draw as well. We have some mana ramp here. Actually, Lantern of Revealing is really good with Corlesa as well. Because we'll always know if we have a land on top, because we always look at the top card. So if we have a land on top, we can be like, yeah, I can just spend four, get another land here if I want. 
it's kind of similar to drawing a card and ramps this up a little. So like right now, if I really wanted to, I can just play a land instead of a uh, lizard folk librarians, which might be okay. It's kind of like a full draw card, but the librarians is going to scry the land away anyway. Probably just playing librarians, but in the future, that is really cool. Scry two. Corlesa on top. Okay, Corlesa. Sorry, but I have one of you in your legendary. Young Blue Dragon is going to be the draw. Opponent stuck on mono black so far. We've got a dragon on top, which is beautiful. I'm going to cast that rather than the blue dragon because it's essentially drawing us a card. By doing that, we'll draw lizard folk librarians to our hand with double team. We are just getting value all over the place. I'll scry one draw. I don't want this prism. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, we have a lantern out. We don't want the prism. Draw the next card, which is an island. Opponent's still stuck on just triple swamp. Ooh, they're on blue-black, it looks like. This is looking really rough for our opponent. And trade into our pseudo-dragon familiar here. Um, I already know what I'm going to draw, and I know it's a good card, so I'm not going to play Librarians here. I'm going to play the Big Dragon. Deal more damage. Because I'm not going to scry away our giant blue sorcery. Snowborn Simulacra. Okay, and now we can just Snowborn Simulacra and double up our board. If we want... Draw five cards to our hand and play one of them. We'd have to discard in the end step. I guess I haven't played a land per turn, so I can put a land into my hand with this as well. That is super unnecessary, though. Let's just scry two and see if we can hit another dragon. We do not. We hit a band together on top, which is fine. They've gotten their blue source, but it's like turn seven now. Illithid Harvester. When enters the battlefield, turn any number of tapped non-token creatures face down, turn them into tutus. Okay, tutus can still defeat an opponent who has three life. Attack all. Yeah, we have lethal on board. And they have scooped them up. Really rough game for our opponent. They're just not really a game of magic. Some rough draws mana-wise. Mono blue hand, not ideal for the three color deck. I think we have to take a mulligan here. Obviously, if we hit a green source, it's pretty great. If we hit that green source in our first two draw steps, and we have eight green sources in the deck. But just too risky for me. I'll definitely keep this. We've got a prophetic prism now, as well as immediately having the green source. So we've got all the colors we need. Just to roll it out with Wilson here, turn two. Playing against blue and black again. No, they've undersimplified our Wilson. Now Wilson's a 0-2 in our graveyard. We got quenched. Corlesa's the draw. Get Corlesa on the board here. Just a land on top for us. Alright, Vampire Spawn's getting in. I don't want to put Corless in any danger here. But to be fair, the most likely card they'd have is the minus two, minus two, and perpetually give it minus one, minus one every other upkeep, which is going to kill it very soon anyway. But at least we get one potential card draw off of Corlesa. 
If our next card is a dragon, our next card is a dragon, but it's a five mana dragon, so that does not work. Unfortunate Sewer Plague, excellent removal. Going to kill Corlesa big time. Attack for negative two, and then Corlesa dies. Pilgrim's Eye from our opponent, grabbing a basic land. Grabs a mountain, blue, black, red. And Horde Robber is the play. I am humbly requesting my opponent to not have more removal. Just let our Lozan stick around so maybe we can draw into something and do something here. Our opponent does not heed our request. They have drawn mono. They've drawn all removal in their draft. Hey, Snowborn Simulacra. Do I have the life total to wait till I have seven mana for this? Not really, but I'm going to anyway because I get to put a vampire spawn out for free and drain them for some life. to six plus this way they might play another card that's better okay they don't Lozan's the draw I guess we can draw a mountain here cast Lozan without using the prism not that it really matters, because we have the prism out, and we'll have a second in hand. I guess we just draw another island. And we put the life steal on the board. The vampire spawn is the one. That we want immediately. is loaded with treasure. It's their own Lozan. Dang, I wish we had a, another dragon in here for Lozan. We do have a band together, though, to blow up theirs. So we need three mana up, or we have eight mana total. We can go a three drop, a two drop, and then band together. So we go Pilgrim's Eye, Horde, Robber, band together. Or we could just play our own Lozan and band together, but I think I'd rather go Pilgrim's Eye, Horde, Robber, band together. Don't they have one card in hand? Okay, hopefully they can't save Lozan. Okay, they can't. Pass. Yeah, Snowborn has been pretty sick so far. Just big dorky sorceries have been pretty great in the format. They've got a 5-mana 3-3 three, three flyer. No! Beginning of your end step, draw a card if your library has more cards in it than your opponent's. Otherwise, each opponent mills 5. So we mill 5. Oh my god, and they hit exclusively, exclusively non-lands. Oh boy. Uh, well. We have the mana for Lozan followed by Muralists. Which is incredible. Because then Lozan immediately shoots. Can't shoot John, but I can shoot the blue dragon. Yeah, New Art Pilgrim's Eye is pretty sweet. Down to 18 cards here, so they draw a card with John in the end step now. 
you're going to be drawing two a turn for a while. Got anything Prophetic Prism? Another land. Well, I mean, we're getting there in the sky. What's our dragons we can pick up off of Muralists? Our biggest one is five mana. It's good enough. We can attack with Muralists too. It's a little risky, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right, they're down to 12. Skullport Merchant. That is pretty excellent here. The opponent's going to draw a lot of cards. They're drawing an extra card in their end step with Drawn. They're drawing extra cards off Skullport Merchant. 19 cards in the deck, 16 in ours. So yeah, they're still drawing extra in their end step until they have a smaller library than ours. Then they don't draw, then they mill us. Send in the squad, they said. Ooh, pseudo dragon familiar is very threatening. Yeah, that can just get us killed because we can't. Uh, ooh, if we get our own pseudo dragon familiar, we can shoot theirs with ours. And then we don't die to it. We've been drawing pretty well. They do get to draw with Skullport Merchant at least. But they're at 12 life. Can we kill them here? We could hit for 8 in the sky. 9, 10, 11? No, we can't kill them. But I can give anything flying at any time for 3. We're at 3 life. We want to be able to block 4 things. I think I just attack with Lozan and hold the rest as blockers. Maybe we attack with Horde Robber though. I think I just attack with one here. Next turn, we've very much got lethal. I don't know why the sound effects aren't happening. When I'm damaging their face. We aren't getting the satisfying just... <laughs> They're going to draw two and discard two. Oh, we're going to mill in their end step now. We'll still have ten cards in our library, though. If we untap with a pseudo dragon familiar on board, we win. But I also don't want to lose to them having another copy of Vampire Spawn. If I don't block with Pseudo Dragon Familiar, then I die to them playing another Vampire Spawn. If I do block with Pseudo Dragon Familiar, I no longer have guaranteed lethal next turn. I'm going to block with it. We get to search with Muralists here and pick up another dragon. Which means we can pick up another pseudo dragon familiar. Yeah, now that I think of it, we've got another pseudo dragon left in the deck unless they mill it. Yeah, one more pseudo dragon unless they mill that pseudo dragon. Which I guess this dies right now, so they don't mill until our end step. So we definitely get to pick up a pseudo dragon familiar. Okay. So that's all going to happen. I am tempted to take Young Blue Dragon, though, because it's our biggest dragon. It'll deal five damage when we cast it, if Lozan is still around. Yeah, because if Lozan dies, Pseudo Dragon Familiar is not going to kill him either, because we're hitting for three in the sky if Lozan dies. So I guess I'm on Young Blue Dragon, because we're drawing a card off of it too before we cast it, so even if Lozan dies, we're getting a scry and then we're playing the creature. 
All right, those are, there's a uh, pilgrim's eye there to block with. Once they block Lozan, we hit with these two, then we cast Young Blue Dragon to hit them for five in the face. It's the onboard plan. The vampire spawn. I'm so glad I played around the vampire spawn. But because they gain two life off of it, we might still not have lethal here. We only have one land left in our deck, so we've got some really good draws we could hit off with Young Blue Dragon's Scry. Oh, and that triggers off of... Oh, okay, we're good. That triggers off the Adventure and then the Hard Cast, too. Oh, and we get a Herd Gorger? Okay, so we're going to hit them for f five, and then we cast Blue Dragon. That's five more damage. Okay, we're already just lethal on board, so sure, we'll draw that. And then we go, we go all attack... Hit for five, then cast Young Blue Dragon, hit for another five. Unless this is your first each turn. Whenever you cast an adventure or dragon. Okay. I was about to say, if Lozan only triggers off of your first adventure or dragon and I just punted the game away, I was going to be really sad. Because <laughs> they've been doing that a lot lately, having cards that only trigger on your first thing each turn. This lack of arena audio bug is is bugging me. I'm going to go ahead and reboot after round three here before we head into round four. That was a pretty great game. Really long one. Hard fought. Yeah, that was a really, uh, really intense one back and forth there because before we... Before we cast our snow thing for seven, it looked like we were really dead. And then even after that, it looked like things were pretty even for a while there, especially when John hit the board. It was like 50-50. We are on the play. Turn to Wilson. Bear comrade. Easy keep. Time to play with our comrade. Corlesa, though. But I'm going to play Wilson first. All right, Wilson, you ready to get in there? Because you're getting in there. Corlesa is probably going to be one of the last things that we do with this hand. Pund is on green, white. Still no creatures to play. We hit our one mountain, which is good for our Lozans. Opponent is down to 14. Here's the Lizard Folk Librarians coming in. Scrying 2. If I order like this, I can draw the forest as my draw for turn, play it, then spend 2 mana on Corlesa and 3 on Pseudo Dragon. I'll be up a card. Instead of just doing this, drawing the familiar, then playing Corlesa. Hoping for another three or less dragon on top. This seems like good value. Even though there aren't a lot of things that we need more mana for, it would only really be our big seven mana sorcery. It's still probably best this way. Plus it'll be easier to have extra lands to discard for Wilson later, if Wilson is still around. If we're just getting more lands onto the board by making plays like this. They're gonna get three 1-1s. One -ones. Well, I'm guessing that uh, Wilson might be dead here. So I can make Wilson win by casting you come to a river. And then I just cast Corlesa here and don't draw the pseudo dragon familiar. It's 
probably worth it. A little bit awkward, because that does kind of ruin my whole plan of, oh, I can draw the land and the dragon. But it's probably worth it. Just wasn't expecting the big blockers out of nowhere card. Owlbear. Big blocker on the ground, so I'll have to make sure we're giving things flying. Do I just give two things flying this turn to put them to three life? Little greedy, but I'm all for it. Rather than committing anything else to the board, we're just trying to just rush down here. Okay, they blow up our flyer. We do have the second one to cast. So we can cast that one and send Wilson into the sky next turn. Get in again. Or the Librarians into the sky if they blow up Wilson this turn. Either way, we're going to put them to one. Really don't like that. I don't like the just... Pass turn all of their manas up. If I flip Wilson on the blue form, Wilson single handedly kills them. And we could still cast the pseudo dragon familiar. Play island here. I'm gonna go for that. Okay, they do have the band together. So now they can't kill the pseudo dragon familiar with that, but if they have another removal spell, they've got us. Five cards in their hand and seven mana available. Four cards in hand now. It's really sad Wilson is not flipped in the grave if they kill Wilson in response. Come on, Corlesa, please find us some dragons on top. Send in the 1-1. One, one. I do not know this set well enough to know what they want here. Just gonna let it in. But I'm concerned there's some card I don't know about that's like... Green, white, and one for a 1-1, one, one, but if you hit your opponent with a creature this turn, it's a 20-20. You never know. Bloodthirst. Mechanics. Pegasus Guardian to draw another card off the Owl Bear. Pretty strong. And a Lurking Roper for another blocker. On the ground, though, Charmed Sleep is on top of our deck. Alright. Yeah, the most likely thing with the attack with the 1-1 one -one is them just really, really trying to kill some of our creatures with a combat trick but even then it's kind of weird because our, our only really important creature was our 2-1 flyer which is already going to die to the 1-1 so we're just never going to block there but I guess 
when they don't have any removal in hand, it's like, well, this is my only chance is if my opponent blocks in a really weird and bad way. So we'll make the attack and see if they do. Just a little desperation attack there. This hand is not good mana-wise. But I don't need two blue sources until I have seven lands anyway, really. And I know I have Mirrorlists on four, and my opponent's going first, so I'm on the draw. Riskiest keep of the day so far. Let's do it. Mirrorlists on turn four. Just don't, don't aggro us out. Let me just play my four drop. Oh, what an excellent draw. Prophetic Prism. Chef's Kiss. Opponent is going to Sand Augury on turn two. Scry one and draw a card with their young blue dragon. We're going to Prophetic Prism on turn two. And now we've just got the complete hookup. I do need one blue source to cast the Simulacra. But now everything else is castable. There we go. And there's the one blue source. We're just set for life now. I thought I was getting quenched again, countered unless I paid two. Now they're just drawing two non-land cards and then putting a card from hand on the bottom of their library. John Irenicus. I just played against you, John. Get out of here. Uh, so we get milled whenever our library is larger than theirs. They draw a card whenever their library is larger than ours. Really powerful card. Draw an extra card every turn, basically. I'd rather play the Mykonid than the Mirrorlists now. Get to our Simulacra sooner and play a John of our own. John versus John action. Okay, draw an extra card. The deck seems to be just chocked full of instants if they just pass the turn there. Or nothing but five mana stuff to do like Young Blue Dragon. I'm going to try to attack with everybody. See what kind of weirdness occurs. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Here's a mirror lists for you to counter. Yep. Wow. I found the annoying control deck. Found the draw go deck with 20 instants in it. Okay, there aren't enough permanents on the board for Simulacra for full value right now. That being said, it would still be quite strong, but I can also just dump both of these out. That's also fine. Please play like a Meteor Golem. That's what I want to see from our opponent. I'd like to get a Meteor Golem to my hand with Simulacra. Well, I lose. Illithid Harvester taps down my entire board state for an entire turn cycle and then turns them all into two twos that don't do anything else. That's not good. I guess I could Illithid Harvester against them, but I'll be dead. I'll take another six here. If I don't do this right now. I think I put John out. John versus John action. 
Wait, this is just gonna make it so we keep milling each other five each turn. None of, none of us is ever gonna draw a card. They're gonna mill me five, then I'm gonna mill them five. Then they're gonna mill me five. <laughs> what, what the heck? John versus John actually sucks. I don't like this anymore. No! I'm just gonna keep milling each Oh my god. I'm not cool with this at all. So they're gonna get milled down to 12, or they're gonna get milled down to 11, then draw there at 10. I'm gonna get milled down to nine, then draw them at eight. I'll mill them down to five, they'll draw there at four. I'll mill down to three, I draw them at two. I'll mill them to zero, and then they draw and die. So if John stays forever, we'll, we'll, we'll win the mill game. Currently by like two, which means we can also draw an extra card here if we really want to. So I think I just play a bunch of big butts and hope they can't blow up. Uh... They can't blow up John and we can try to win the mill game. <laughs> John's just constantly milling each other for five. They'll mill out first. This is weird. <sighs> oh. I, mean, I guess we're not literally dead, we're at two life, but then they just play a removal spell on the flyer and we're dead. Oh, they milled our Lowe's, they milled our Lowe's in. That was like our best draw in the whole deck. We still have one more in there. Six, seven, eight, nine mana. I can make two creatures flying with pseudo dragon familiar. So we play pseudo dragon instead of young blue dragon and then just pass. Ready to make two flying blockers here. And then if we survive this swing, if we and John survive, John mills them to zero cards in library. They need another removal spell here to kill us immediately. Maybe I should have put a 2-2 into the sky so they couldn't play like a Manticore to finish Drawn off. Okay, they have another removal spell, so we're dead. God dang it. <laughs> that would have been so fun if we just milled them out in the end. But yeah, even if we had the flying blockers to survive, they would just blow up John and then they're not getting milled out anymore. <sighs> Four and one. Let's be heading to round six. A fine keep opponent with the turn one cobalt war caller scariest turn one start in format every creature they play is just gonna be haste now hasting out a 2-2 yeah extra scary when our curve doesn't start till three with this hand Oh my god, yeah, that's... That is a strong null hunting party. I'm gonna have to just charm sleep that. And hope they don't have anything that can deal with enchantments, but they're green. So it's very possible. Valor Singer with haste now. I like Lizard Folk Librarian here, that blocks pretty well. Sets up our draws. These are the kind of things we want. We do want one more land, though. 
So I kind of want to get rid of Herd Gorger, actually, because we already have the big game-winning 7-mana play. That's the Simulacra, not the Hill Giant. So we go Corlesa, and then we play Corlesa and Band together next turn. How's the set treating me? It's solid. I'm having more fun with it today than I was in the uh, early access. I think it's pretty fine. It's been cool. I did a 1-3 and three in sealed, and now I'm 4-1 and one in draft currently. We've got a fun uh, green-blue splashing red dragon's tribal deck. Built around two copies of Corlesa. Bear with haste. Band together only does three damage right now. That's devastating. You did a zero three and sealed with simulacrum. What's the simulacrum? God, this owlbear is actually just kind of devastating. If I wait a turn, I can blow it up with band together and still have my blockers on everything else. Oh, you mean the Snowborn Simulacra? I just realized I have a card named Simulacra in my hand. This card's been really nice. It is slow, which means you can die to the Cobalt War Caller. Everything I play has haste decks, but if it resolves, the card has been incredible for me. Warriors of Tiamat. Not very cool. Yeah, this is all kinds of bad news. Okay, I mean, we take no damage here this turn, which means we get to cast the Simulacra, which will be really big. I think I just want a 4-4 untapped, so I want the Null Hunting Party as my play for free. And then I would like to have a Charmed Sleep. Three more cards, just the biggest, bestest blockers, like Librarians. Valor Singer, Amber Grease, I think. Auto Pay. We play the Null Hunting Party for free. I think that's what we're on here. Four four blocker. We don't die like right now. We get to start using the Simulacrum to just try to overwhelm them with the card advantage it just gave us of the draw five. So we're just gonna start dropping two defensive cards a turn. Just trade everything off one for one everywhere we can get it. But it is 
reasonably likely that we just die this turn. If our opponent has the cards, we can find the line. Ferida's Fireball. It's a pretty big one. They can have Valor Singer buff Ambergris and force us to trade our Librarians off into them. And that is the play. Eight mana. Can only play two cards no matter what, so we may as well play Librarians. And a three drop. Scry two. Pseudo Dragon Familiar as the three drop. That would trade into the Warriors of Tiamat they have there, so that seems fine. And then we get to keep another card in our hand. Because we're playing the dragon off the top from Corlesa. And draw a card there in that interaction. So now we have 2-4 two, on the 2-3, two, 2-1 two, on the Warriors of Tiamat, and we might just have to chump block whatever big haster they play with Warcrawler. Another Valor Singer, a Rabble Rousers with haste and fire breathing, that's a big deal. Buff up the Valor Singer to four power. Trades off into one of these two. Probably better if it trades into one of these two. Underseller Myconid, Myconid is huge here. But Lozan's maybe bigger. We don't have another dragon to play off of Lozan right now. As soon as we do, though, Lozan's going to be incredible. Dealing damage to whatever we target whenever we cast a dragon. So if we can draw more dragons after Lozan, that will be perfect. I kind of want to charm sleep this before they can double team it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. Three mana for Charm Sleep leaves us with six mana otherwise. So we go Charm Sleep, Valor Singer, and Underseller Myconid. We have five blockers. We know they have three attackers next turn minimum, potentially a fourth attacker if they top deck. Because Cobalt Warcaller, I guess Cobalt Warcaller wouldn't attack if they tap it to give their next card haste. I don't think that I can afford to attack yet, but I can pretty soon. Because right now if I attack, I'm dead to them top decking a flying creature. And they definitely top decked something. Another Rabble Rouser. Playing Lozen is card advantage. True, I go up a card there. But it's way less blockers. It's one more blocker instead of three. So it's a lot riskier. They have the mana to pump twice to make it four power. Four power, we can block like this. They kill one card. Yeah, I think that's fine. And if they kill the Myconid, we get a Sapperling, so they just kill the Valor Singer. 
and there's the next Rabble Rouser. Mirrorless on top is perfect. Now Lozen into Mirrorless, use the Mirrorless to blow up the Rabble Rouser or the Valor Singer. Probably Rabble Rouser, because that's going to trade up into anything. Now we're safe to attack with one flyer, because we have the backup flyer to block with, even if they haste the flyer out with Warcaller. Another Corlesse is a little awkward, but it's probably worth casting Corlesse just to damage their Hobgoblin Captain here. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I guess we can play this as well, because we might as well. And we know they don't have removal in hand. So we just keep sending in the flyers, and then we can give another creature flying if things go bad. Because we've got extra mana up now, because we are done dumping our entire hand onto the board. So we have the three mana to give another creature flying with Pseudo Dragon Familiar if necessary. And I think we just attack for lethal next turn, just give the whole board flying and send it all sideways. Okay, yeah, we definitely just lethal this next turn now. The flunge. Take a young blue dragon, deal five damage when I cast it. And they scoop them up. That is going to be five and one, I think. Really nice uh, late game recovery, thanks to our big old simulacra. Yep, five and one. In the money. Let's be heading to round seven now. Gotta get some more water. I chug water like nobody's business when I'm streaming or recording. All right, we're going first. Turn two, Prophetic Prism into turn three, Lurking Roper. Let's keep our opponent off of our face until we hit seven mana for our Simulacra to try to end the game with that again. I'm such a fan of these decks that just sit here and wait until... Oh, wow, now we're just playing Corlesa. That just sit here and wait until they can play a really expensive uh, sorcery. <laughs> no, they're kind of dumb, but I enjoy them. Um, I don't need to ramp into Simulacra because I don't need to play it until... Um, until there's things on the board to copy anyway. So I don't need to play it immediately. Guiding Bolt, my Lurking Roper. Goodbye, friend. Ooh, a mountain is coming up. Oh, I was hoping for my second Scaled Nurture on top. Get some Corlesa value there. No Corlesa value for me. Blessed Hippogriff, 2-3 Flyer. So much for the attacks. One mana away from Simulacra. Playing a card for free as soon as I cast it. Plus, there aren't even enough permanents to copy right now. There's four, and they're not that big. There we go. Owlbear makes it perfect. I think... I think Owlbear makes it genuinely worth it here, especially if I'm just going to keep getting lands. I definitely need to do something here. So yeah, Simulacra for five. Probably the weakest Simulacra we've cast so far. But it's fine. Oh no, we hit a dragon on top and now we're going to draw that to our hand directly. Directly. 
Minimus Containment or Owl Bear? I don't like that. That's rude. Everything's coming in the sky for six damage here. Five, six, seven, eight, five, and then a three drop. That's perfect. Okay, so five for Lozan. And then with Prophetic Prism, we do three for Pseudo Dragon Familiar and shoot the Hippogriff and gain two life. They have a second Hippogriff to save the. God, damn. these Hippogriffs are so annoying. Well, I have two flyers at least, I guess. I can actually use Tears Blessing at instant speed to give Pseudo Dragon Familiar indestructible and deal one damage to their Hippogriff, which puts it down to two toughness, and then block it with our two one flyer that will be indestructible at the time. But I could also just make our 4-2 flyer indestructible, shoot them for one in the face, and block with an indestructible 4-2 flyer on the owl bear instead. Or we can do a mixture of the two, give this indestructible, do one damage to that hippogriff, let our uh, pseudo dragon familiar die to kill both. Yeah, this seems like. The best is just like mixing those two lines together. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Okay. Now I have to sacrifice. I basically have to discard a Coralessa if I want to kill this Hippogriff, but that's probably worth it. Because I'll have to cast a Scaled Nurturer and a Coralessa when I already have one Coralessa on board. Unless I hit a Dragon underneath this island no did not hit a dragon underneath that island so we go scale nurturer two to hippogriff or less uh four or two to hippogriff almost don't want to attack with Lozan, because they could have you hear something on watch to deal five to an attacking creature. They only have two cards in hand, though. If that's one of the two cards, I think we're still in the lead. We'll see. God dang it. <laughs> Every time I open my stupid mouth. Yeah, so all they have is a Steadfast Paladin. Yeah, we are still definitely pretty far in the lead. Ooh, Owlbear on the top can change that around real quick, though. And into a Gate to Manorborn, which draws them another card. Really nice draws there. Got a young blue dragon on top. I don't know if we can cast the adventure off the top. Nope. I don't even need to shoot the owl bear. I can just chump with sapperlings. I can even just chump with the myconid. Oh, I guess it's trample. So I can't really chump all of the damage, but I'm at 14 life. I can take some owl bear hits. Save band together if they get a flyer. Okay, well, I'm gonna not deal with a 6 6 trample, I guess. Band together is no longer getting saved. And there you're gonna scoop them up. That is gonna be 6 and 1 now for this Teamer Dragons deck. This has been really fun. Two copies of Corlesa and two copies of Lozan just 
go really absurdly together. Both are very powerful cards. Players with mythic orange names are Wizards of the Coast employees. Make sure to say hello. Pair me up against a wizard employee. I want to beat somebody up. <laughs> Some of the tips on Arena are pretty funny. This is not a Wizards of the Coast employee. <gasps> Double Corlesa, no green source. There's some issues with this hand, but Prophetic Prism makes me not care. <laughs> and that's probably for, for the worst. I should probably mulligan, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna draw a ton of cards off Corlesa again. I've got like Nine more dragons in this deck. I already drew three of them, so I think it's only nine left, but it's still a lot. Yeah, this hand is like really good if our opponent isn't aggressive, but I can get slammed. You've seen exactly one mythic orange name and you demolish them at Brawl. The poor person got a little mana screwed. Yeah, I think I've played against one. Mythic orange person. I think it was uh it was it was um, Blake who does the weekly MTG streams. I think it was him. Cause he was in Mythic Limited. I don't remember who won. But it was pretty even. That's the only time I remember that I've got paired against an orange name, but it might have happened again some other time. Uh-oh. Opponent is on the play with a turn two scale nurturer. So they are going to be miles ahead of me when it comes to their curve. They're going to play a four mana card, and then I'm going to be playing a three mana card. Wow, and it's Oya oh yeah, talk the polar werebear. Well... I kind of think I need to try to ramp into a Herd Gorger or something here. This card's just going to run laps around me. Ramped that out on turn three. Now they get a random fish. Got muralists. Probably dying this polar rare bear, but we'll see what happens. Got a dragon off the top. Never didn't have it. Sick value. So their underseller Mykonid can start making fish with the food that they get. We get to play our herd gorger next turn, which makes it so they can't attack into us unless they blow up the herd gorger. Small fish, fingers crossed, small fish, everybody. I need your bless RNG energy. I need you to, to pray for small fish. No Nadir Kraken. No giant shark, voracious great shark. Small fish energy, let's go. Oh no! <laughs> you all failed me! Oh no! <laughs> I'm blaming everyone in chat. We're suspending everybody who sent me their small fish energy. Oh my god. I have to attack with everything now? Oh my god. Well, let's tap this. That's true, that's not a fish. That's cheating. That's cheating, Werebear, that's not a fish. How do you f <laughs> fish for a whale? Okay. 
I guess I can use familiar to give things flying, so that might be the largest thing in the in the spell book, yeah. I guess I guess I could give this stuff flying, but then I'm just gonna get cracked back for a million anyway. Yeah, I think I'd go for herd gorger. And I have to do it pre-combat, otherwise Nurture has to attack, and I can't tap Nurture for mana. But even with a Herd Gorger, I'm getting slammed by this whale. I could put it back in their hand, and then they can't afford it. Until they make another fish. Make another food token, get triple blue. Then they can just do it again. But I guess I have to wait a turn to do that anyway. So I can't play that off the top. Yeah, I think it's Herd Gorger. It is a spell they can recast. It's, uh, they conjure a duplicate. Or they draft a card from the spellbook. It's, it's alchemy, so in alchemy, if something's making, like, a version of a card, it's pretty much always gonna be, like, a full-on card that can end up in your hand or grave or wherever. Because alchemy is rude like that. So Corless is an absolute goner. That was to be expected. Okay, so I think I think my initial plan here of bounce the whale is probably what we're going with. Cause then it's like, well they can't. Well they could recast it later if they get triple blue, which they can do with a food token. They can't get the triple blue unless they acquire a food by hitting me with Oyam and Artok, and I can use the Herd Gorger to make sure that doesn't happen. Although I guess I have to keep attacking, so I have to attack with Herd Gorger and I can't block with it anyway. So maybe I kill my own pirate? Is my best bet? None of these are a great bet, and my chair is very mad at me. Yeah, we're probably killing our own pirate. All right, pirate. I'm over it. And then I guess we can play Muralists. That's a pretty good blocker because it gives us something when it dies. Things are looking rough, but we're doing our best. Well, still double block the Polar Wear Bear, but then I take lethal from everything else if they all attack here. I can go to one life and kill this Polar Wear Bear. <laughs> Is that worth it? Probably not. At this point, we're just sending a message, right? All right, I'm basically scooping here, but I'm sending a message. I'm gonna go to one life. Maybe Lozan can do something. Charm sleep off the top, but at one life, we're gone. Yeah, there's no there's no lines here. That's super game. Six and two. Got polar wear bared. The evil fisherman. Caught a goddamn whale. Alright, we are on the play, and this is excellent mana here. Turn two Corlesa as well. This is beautiful. This is a phenomenal hand to start off the final boss. Hopefully it can carry us to the seven win run. Green black, scaled nurturer, turn two. They've got some ramp going on as well. 
Got a young blue dragon on top, but we have nowhere near enough mana to play that yet. So no Corlesa value there. Four mana from our opponent for Draconic Muralists, which is a very good card. Ooh, Lozan on top, but again, one mana more than we have, so another missed value off of Corlesa here. All I can afford to do is scry one draw card, and I might as well do that. Just pick up that uh, Lozan immediately. Alright, Muralist is going to keep smacking for four. I like Lozan a lot, but my opponent passed turn without casting anything with four mana up in a green-black deck. So I feel like they definitely have removal and Lozan's just going to die. So I'm a little tempted to wait to cast her until we have the extra mana to immediately cast another dragon. Might be extra greedy, though. We'll see. I just, I really feel like Grim Bounty and stuff is, is happening here. Blow up our blue dragon? No. Well, looks like just dropping Lozan would have been the better line. Our opponent has had so much life gain here. It's been hard to catch up. Yeah, if we dropped Lozan, we could have dropped Blue Dragon for damage this turn. And they've got removal for our Herd Gorger, so we can't block their Herd Gorger, so we're taking 11 now. There we go. Pseudo Dragon Familiar. 4, 5, 6, 7. Not enough mana to cast Lozan and that. We're still one mana off. We don't have the second blue for Charmed Sleep to lock down the Herd Gorger. We gotta do some chump blocking. But I already have a chump blocker. Drop Lozan. I haven't played any removal yet. You know, I'm missing Corlesa value here, but I'm gaining Lozan value potentially. Giving them a dragon here, they're gaining more life. Oh, if they have the trample trick, we're dead. Yep. That sucks. <laughs> that was brutal. The opponent just curved out with the mana ramp dork on turn two. And just slamming in with giant creatures super quickly. I didn't sequence things perfectly because I was playing around potential removal from our opponent, but even if we did, we were incredibly dead there. Rough six and three it will be. Not a bad record at all. Pretty great run from that deck, but I thought that deck was super fun, super strong. I would have loved to see a seven win with it. Sometimes you don't quite get there, though.